Hey guys, it's Shaylin, and I'm here today with another writing video. I feel like it's been a little while since I did like a actual writing advice video, so today I have one of those for you. I wanted to talk about how to use writing advice effectively. First of all, we are in an interesting uh, environment. If you're in the online writing community, you're going to be exposed to a lot of advice from different people, and sometimes it can be hard to know what to do with it. And I also see a lot of conversation about what's good writing advice versus bad writing advice, and I feel like a lot of it is very black and white. I don't really <laughs> like how it's talked about. This is actually something I see mostly on Tumblr and Twitter because um, because I feel like on those platforms it's easier for people to just spew out a random thought and without much thought because it's so quick to post something there and then people just like agree with it and just accept it. I think a lot of the conversation about this topic is very black and white and a lot of it has to do with just what ways can you blacklist someone who gives advice? Like what qualities can you look for? Oh, they've done this, they've done this, they've done this, therefore nothing they say is valid. Um, anyway, it's very poison in the welly and it's not that helpful, so let's have a chat about this. I wanted to start by acknowledging something that I think is true about writing and books. On this bookshelf behind me, there are hundreds of books. Now the bookshelf is actually much bigger than you can see in the frame. I actually have three of these. Oh my, I'm literally getting attacked right now. Oh, did you see that, Paul? There's actual carnage happening right now. There are hundreds of books behind me, and I've been collecting these books since I was around eight, so they vary quite a lot in category. I could choose any book on this shelf, and there will be people who think the book is good and people who think the book is bad. What makes a good book is not a universally set thing. People have different tastes in literature because we can't agree on what the best book is, and that means there is no one single set of qualities that make a good book. And so for that reason, it's the same with writing advice. There is no single set of writing rules that make a good book. There's only the writing rules that you cultivate for yourself. So when it comes to writing advice, I don't like to see it as deciding what's right and what's wrong, or who is right and who is wrong, who's credible and not credible, but kind of cultivating your own set of rules that you personally like to follow based on the work that you want to create. Different books here are good for completely different reasons, or I like them for completely different reasons, or I dislike them for completely different reasons, and other people will have completely different opinions on these books. So let's start with a pretty common conversation, and that's how do you know if the person giving advice is credible? Maybe I'm particularly sensitive to this one because people love to analyze whether I'm credible or not in my own comments section, but let's have a chat about this. In a lot of cases, a lot of cases it doesn't really matter whether the person is credible, and I know that might seem weird, but hear me out. If the advice is tried and true and well-researched, does it really matter who's giving it? A lot of advice that people give, especially on this platform, on AuthorTube, is kind of the same advice. Let's be honest, it's kind of the same advice. The person giving it didn't invent it. They've just learned it from other sources and, you know, accumulated it into their own, you know, set of rules that they like to follow and presented it to you. So we can easily say this person isn't credible for whatever reason. They didn't create the advice. The advice is kind of standard, you know, writing craft knowledge. So does it really matter who's giving the advice and whether or not they're able to follow it in their own work? You know, I don't really think it does. I think the advice itself is much more important than who's giving it. From kind of personal experience, on this channel, I really only try to talk about things that I feel like I actually have personal knowledge on. I make videos for another channel, and that's Reedsy's channel. And so, on their channel, I have made videos on things I don't really know much about. So I did a video on that channel on how to write a memoir, and I've never written a memoir before. I don't really know anything about memoir writing. But in that video, none of the advice was my own advice. It was just researched advice that I then curated, organized, and said to the camera. It wasn't something that I pulled from my brain. It was just very well researched, and so it could be considered correct, even though I have absolutely no personal qualifications to talk about writing a memoir. I'm getting it from a source 
from people who are qualified to talk about that. Does that make sense? It can be tricky because people don't always list their sources and I've said things on this channel that didn't really come from a source that I just kind of believe and yeah, we don't always list our sources. A lot of the time it's just kind of common knowledge and in that case I don't think it really matters because I feel like the idea a lot of the time that I hear is it's bad advice if the person is a bad writer. You could be losing out on a lot of pretty good tips if you decide this person is a bad writer, so therefore all the advice they give is bad. It, it's probably not even their advice, they probably didn't invent it. Because <laughs> we talk a lot about evaluating a person's writing, read their writing, and you can't really trust their advice if their um, writing is bad. Understanding what is good writing is much, much easier than actually creating good writing. And it's the same as critiquing writing is much, much easier than writing the work itself. It's easier to critique and to understand what's good than to actually do it. Um, you know, I could think of a myriad of analogies for this. Okay, I used to be a competitive archer. It's all about your form and your technique. And I wasn't a perfect archer. Like, I won some competitions. I was the provincial champion a couple times. I was certainly not en route to the Olympics or anything, and so my form wasn't perfect and I knew that there were problems I had with my form. And I could know exactly what problems I have, someone could film me shooting and I could watch it back and be like, the elbow's too high, you know, or whatever. But then I still couldn't implement it when I was actually shooting. Even though I knew exactly what was wrong, I couldn't just do it just because I knew. And it's kind of the same with writing. You can know what makes a great book. You can read a book and be like, this is amazing. I want to write just like this doesn't mean that you can just go do it. Understanding what makes something good isn't the same as the ability to actually create that. Saying that someone's writing isn't amazing means that their advice is bad is kind of overlooking the fact that it's much easier to understand what is good writing and articulate it than actually do it. So that's why I think it's not really helpful to say, I found this piece by this author flawed therefore the author's advice isn't credible. There are times where people don't really follow their own advice and they really probably could have, like advice that's very easy to implement, but there are also times where it's very very difficult to perfectly follow your own advice because your advice, like I said, that set of rules that you curate for yourself, is kind of your ideal standard. If you could just write your ideal standard all the time, wouldn't the world be easy? Ain't always like that. So for that reason, I think advice should be evaluated in and of itself, outside of the person who's giving it, outside of what they've said in the past. Because also, believe it or not, you can agree with some of what someone says and not all of it. It's just about what you personally want to curate into your, your set of writing rules or guidelines, which is going to be different for every person. The way I see it is, and I'm going to talk more uh, in a minute about um, you know, how to decide what's good advice for you. I think good advice kind of just rings true. You know, uh, there have been times where I've been reading like essays on craft for class and just like reading through it and then every once in a while I just read something and be like, whoa, that really rings true. And as someone who reads a lot and writes a lot, I can tell that this is accurate for what I want to write and this feels right. And I think that you kind of can tell that based on, you know, your reaction to advice. I think you can kind of know like, oh, this is right for me, I believe in that. Um, or this isn't right for me, I don't believe in that. You know, I see a lot of advice that might be good for other writers but isn't necessarily good for my writings. There isn't really universal, I mean, there might be some advice that I would be like, okay, this is just bad, you know? like. Obviously there's kind of a spectrum, like there's advice that I think is usually good or almost always good and advice that is probably not a very good idea, but in the middle it's mostly like, is it good for you? Is it good for what you want to write? Also if you're evaluating someone's writing to decide if you want to implement their advice, again I don't think it's really about um, is their writing good or bad, because that's so subjective, but it's do they write stylistically in a way that you want to write? Or in a way that would play into how you write, you know? If that advice is something that really plays into the author's style. Some advice is kind of just more general and it doesn't really affect the writer's specific style as much, but some of it, is, it very much contributes to the writer's specific writing style. You know, if you don't like the way I write, if you read my writing and you're like, eh, she doesn't really write how I want to write. If nothing about my writing 
rings true to how you want your writing to be, which is very likely. Nothing about my writing is in any way a universal key to what good writing is, like no writing is. Um, it's just my effort at achieving what I want my kind of perfect standard of writing to be, but it's not even my perfect standard of writing. Like, I'm 21, I haven't written that yet, like I'm just striving for it. I also think there's a bit of disillusionment where we put a little too much um, responsibility on people giving advice when really the responsibility is on both the advice giver and the advice taker. This isn't me as someone who gives writing advice, like I'm literally sitting here giving writing advice right now. So this isn't me trying to say like I don't have any responsibility to, you know, say things that I believe are actually helpful because I, I do have the responsibility to provide good information, but I also think as someone taking my advice, you equally have that responsibility. I don't think it's really fair to say this person gave bad advice, it's just all on them. You as a consumer of advice, you also have to be critical. You have to critically consume writing advice based on what you want to write. You can't just be a mindless drone, you know? You have to go into this with your own set of beliefs, decide what you believe in and what's going to work for you. You can't just mindlessly accept everything people say as truth and good for you, because I don't know what's good for you. I know nothing about your writing, speaking to 99.9% .9 of the people watching this, I know nothing about your writing. I don't know what's good for your book. Not everything I say will necessarily be good for your book, but you can't just take everything I or anyone else says as fact just because they're saying it, and then later be like, well, it's not my fault, they gave me bad advice. Every piece of advice you consume, you have to be very critical of. And again, it doesn't mean deciding whether this person is 100% credible or non-credible. Every individual piece of advice you consume going, is this right for me, in this case, for what I'm writing? You know, it depends a lot on the circumstance. Like, I think, for example, a professor teaching their students has more responsibility with um, on their shoulders in terms of what they say, because there's a power imbalance there and their students are accepting that this person is an authority. But in a situation like this where you're listening to me talk, I really there's no power imbalance here. There's really no reason why you should feel like I'm more qualified than any other person. It doesn't mean that I don't believe in what I'm saying, but I just think everyone as a consumer of advice on AuthorTube in particular or any blog or just on the internet, you have to be, you have just as much responsibility for the advice you implement as the person giving the advice does for sharing it. One other thing I wanted to touch on before I get into some kind of different types of advice and how to curate what will work for you, one that I see a lot and I see this thrown around on Tumblr all the time and it's become one of those things where I feel like someone just shouted it into the echo chamber at one point and then everyone started shouting it back and just accepted it. And it's if a person uses the words always or never or seems to imply that something is a rule, they are not credible because they implied that it was a rule and nothing is a rule. Now I agree that, you know, Pretty much everything has exceptions in creative writing, even grammar has exceptions. You know, grammar, the most technical mathematic aspect of writing probably, has exceptions. You know, there are stories purposefully written with incorrect grammar. There are literally exceptions to everything. However, I think if people say the person probably phrased it that way because they, you know, they believe in this as a rule for their personal set of writing rules, or it was just a phrasing slip. Like, just because someone says it that way, uses that single word, doesn't automatically invalidate the entire piece of advice. Pretty much on any craft-related video I've ever made, there's always a comment, if not multiple, where people are saying, this isn't a rule, by the way. Famous writers have broken this all the time. Obviously, like, it's kind of ridiculous to expect anyone giving advice to always, anytime they say something, preface it with the disclaimer, this isn't a rule and there will be exceptions to it. That's inherent. That's pretty much always the case, and sometimes it's more breakable than others. So if someone uses the word always or never or implies something as a rule, it doesn't mean it necessarily is, it doesn't mean you have to always or never do this, but on the other hand, it doesn't mean the advice is bad just because the person phrased it that way. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about some different types of writing advice and how you might uh, curate that into your little 
writing rule book, understand the difference between technical and stylistic advice. So technical advice has to do with, you know, the kind of more objective technical construction of your story um, and its language, whereas stylistic advice has more to do with kind of the individual flair that you put onto it um, that makes it your own. So for example, with technical advice, you know, this very much has to do with things that are more universal. It doesn't mean they're necessarily rules, but they kind of in more cases lead to good storytelling. So structure, you know, a lot of um, like prose related things like not using adverbs. Some people could argue that that's stylistic and in some cases it might be stylistic but I think most of the time it's technical. You know these are kind of the things that they don't really have to do with the artistic part of writing, they more have to do with the objective construction. And I think that more technical advice should be considered more as a rule, doesn't mean always a rule, but more as a rule because it's more universal to the vast majority of stories. You know, it's like most books, if they have a weak structure, will be less enjoyable than a book with a strong structure. You know, it's not really a stylistic thing, it's kind of just has to do with the technical construction. And I think very technical things doesn't mean always or as a rule, but they should be considered more carefully with more heart. Whereas stylistic things are things that might be more individual. One person might be like, I really like to do this with my writing, but it's it's more the kind of artistic part of it. And this varies so, so much. is where people differ a lot on what's good and what's bad. Some people love lush flowery writing. Some people hate it vehemently. I've seen reviews of books where the writing is not even that flowery, like really not that flowery, and re endless reviews saying the writing was too flowery, I hate this kind of writing. But this is all stylistic and people's opinions will differ on it more. So if it's stylistic, this is where I think it's, you know, good to ask yourself if it fits into your own vision for your own work. Next up, know the difference between academic and creative advice. Sometimes people get tripped up because they learn things in elementary school that are academic don't do's, but they're really fine creatively, such as don't start a sentence with because. Did you know it's actually grammatically totally correct to start a sentence with because? They just teach it in school because a lot of the time sentences that start with because are fragments, but not always. So they just say don't start a sentence with because because that's easier to teach kids than not writing sentence fragments, but it's actually fine. But you know, there are things that in academia, if you were writing your you know, master's thesis in sociology you wouldn't do, like not using contractions. In creative writing that's fine, but it might not be the case for academic writing. So if you've learned something, especially in school, you know, understand the difference between what's a don't do in an academic paper, what's a don't do in a creative writing text, because most of the things you're not allowed to do in academic papers, you're allowed to do creatively. For process related advice, this is so, so personal that I don't think there are really rules or even things that I could say you should probably do this. Process related advice doesn't have to do with the actual book and its content and its construction, it has to do with the how you went about creating it. What times you wrote, how often you write, what methods you use, where you write, if you outline, how you organize, stuff like that. When it comes to process related advice, this is the one that I worry about the most with this kind of mob think culture that we have in the online writing community where someone says something then it's just it's just true and then everyone feels like they have to do it everyone writes their books differently it really doesn't matter how you write if it works for you if you get your best brainstorming done by like locking yourself in a deep freeze for like 15 minutes and just freezing your ass off i don't know why that would inspire you but maybe it does you do you. You know, there's a lot of opinions on whether you should outline or not. Like, this is process related advice and no one can really tell you what's right or wrong in this case. People can share their opinions and I think it's it's fine to give process related advice because you never know what might work for you until you consider it and maybe try it. But if anyone is telling you and it's just related to the process, not the actual craft, this is what you do or this is what you don't do, there is no rule there. You don't have to outline. That's the one that people get the most elitist about. You have to outline, you have to. People get so forceful about it. I've done it in the past. It's just so individual. Everyone has a different writing process and that's fine. You know, you can do it right now. Look up the writing processes of famous writers. Some of them do some wild, weird stuff to like get in their writing zone. And if that's what works for them, that's fine. And if it works for you, that's cool. 
like don't do anything illegal or uh, dangerous but otherwise you do you. Um, I would also consider advice rooted in genre or storytelling preference more carefully than um, advice rooted more in like the technical construction of pretty much any story. So if a person says never use this trope, this person might just have like a real hate for this trope. People like to give preference related advice and act like it's true because it's what they like in a book. Like I said at the beginning, everyone likes different books for different reasons and we can't really decide collectively on what makes a good book or else everyone would have the same reading taste. So if the advice is very deeply rooted in the advice giver's storytelling preference and genre preference, what tropes and elements they like, in that case I would be extra considerate of what you implement and really compare to your own work and be like, okay, well, does this person, is this person talking about the type of story that I'm writing? The type of story I want to write? Do I have similar storytelling preferences to this person? And if you don't, just because someone says your book should be fast paced, you might like slow paced books and that might be what you want to write. That's totally fine. That's a preference. It's not a rule. Alright guys, so I'm gonna wrap up this video. That's I think everything I wanted to say. Probably not everything. I probably could ramble on about this for another hour, but my battery is dying. So I'm gonna close this video off. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions you can always send me an ask on Tumblr.